sufficient numbers. Edwig, you have the floor. So I have the floor. I will take it. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, all those who are looking at us and who are with us uh, from uh, far away places tonight, I hope that we are audible and uh, also uh, that you can see us. This was just a little gap, says Edwig. Uh, you can see the book in my hands. <laughs> so that is actually uh, the second uh, story uh, he uh, wrote. <clears throat> and uh, I read the book, uh, you have also seen it in the description, um, and, uh, and that uh, was also the book uh, which um, was uh, the reason why um, our author got uh, the uh, Orange Prize. Well, everybody was very, very nice and kind, um, the Orange Prize um, team was very nice. 
Euh, je sais pas, je suis, je suis peut-être un beau gosse. Perhaps they liked me. Il y a pas de logique. Pourquoi tu es en train d'être modeste? Et puis même, il y a ce, il y a ce roman, il est dit là. So this is the story, uh, and um, you also won a prize for it. Um, uh, very simply speaking, uh, the Francophonie uh, financed the prize organized by the Ministry of Culture on uh, Senegalese literature. Uh, one had uh, to submit a manuscript. This is what I did. And I saw the prize. Uh, it was interesting for me. And I started to write. Uh, I was in Geneva. I was at the Salon de Livre, the book fair of Geneva. And uh, the prize uh, was organized by uh, FIDAC. Uh, and on this occasion, uh, the uh, panel composed of uh, writers uh, and also um, insiders uh, into Senegalese and African culture uh, who decided to give me the prize. So this was the story, how you got the prize. I'm not jealous, not at all. I just admire how easily you went about it. There is another uh, text uh, which will soon be published in 2023 in France. And uh, this new book will also hopefully be interesting. So tell us a little bit more about the writing process. How do you write? Uh, I write during the night. I don't sleep at night. Uh, so after 11 at night, I start writing and then I write the whole night. So you are not sleeping at all. Oh la la. Perhaps a few hours, that is sufficient. Yeah, you are still young, so maybe it's possible for you to do that. So um, for me, that would no longer be possible, but you are still young, uh, Khalil. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, the forgotten people um, on the journey are uh, dehumanized. They are forgotten. Uh, they are also lost uh, in the media. They are uh, lost everywhere. Uh, they are migrants. Uh, they are somehow uh, lost in the space and uh, um, people are dying. It's a universe. It is something that is a, a very, very difficult world where people are dying. Uh, it is even difficult for us to think about such a world. Uh, they are completely dehumanized. So we try to encourage people to think about those forgotten people. It is an issue of humanity. And uh, we have to focus on them. We have to strongly focus on them. We also need to um, maybe show that in movies, why forgotten? One has the impression uh, that uh, there is reporting uh, about them. 
and uh, we are under the impression that migration uh, is uh, a current uh, theme and uh, in your story uh, you uh, also write about their families <clears throat> and they are trying to come together again and to find their families. And uh, can you tell us more about that? That is what I did. Uh, these are long poems. Uh, and uh, tragedies. It is tragic what they go through. Uh, they are migrants. And uh, also uh, all those uh, who have died while they were migrants on their journey to Europe. Uh, it is not really poetry in the true sense. But uh, I understood very early the limits of poetry, uh, where creation is possible, and how we can internalize and how we can also express everything that I wanted to express exhaustively. And this point uh, is about humanity. I uh, wanted to create something bigger, something that is growing, uh, and to see also uh, their um, anxieties to show that. Uh, and uh, uh, they have also um broken destinies um and i wanted to show it in detail uh, we uh, can see and that is what i wanted to show in my uh, story uh, i wanted to be poetic Yes, uh, this uh, uh, certainly exists also in poetry uh, and also in Romans. Uh, you are writing about migrants. Uh, Sami, uh, who was forgotten, uh, Rashid, uh, also appears in your story. Uh, uh, on page 205, uh, Colonel Moyes. Uh, so they are turning around him. We have to see uh, the following. Sammy was forgotten. Uh, and also his destiny was forgotten. And what I say about Sammy's death and what happened after his death, when they discovered his uh, corpse, Sammy was forgotten. And he will be forgotten once his corpse was discovered, it was also difficult to identify it, to identify the identity of Sammy. So uh, one cannot really express uh, in detail um, the migration crisis that occurred. And uh, we are assuming many things. And my text is a repository. Uh, we also uh, raise questions about our thinking, 
uh, and uh, about money, it is much deeper than that. Uh, it is uh, uh, also about the West. It is about uh, uh, the inability to other things than being a migrant. And we have uh, Colonel Moes and Sammy as characters in the story. And I have no uh, excuses for uh, Colonel Moes. I do not defend him either. I uh, try to understand his, uh, his character and uh, to also uh, prove resilience uh, of the period. Uh, and you also said uh, something about a writer who also tried to transmit a message. <laughs> I'm happy that you have sensed that because uh, I blamed myself. Uh, there are so many important things, uh, so many things which should be underlined and shown in a story. Uh, and uh, in uh, Morocco, uh, in Rabat, uh, there was also a book fair and uh, they were also very critical about migration literature. I uh, was asked many questions and I took them uh, at heart and uh, how we can identify a writer through the transmission of literature and uh, how people can become writers. Uh, and it was certainly also uh, an honor for me to be part of uh, people who are recognized as writers with their texts, with their stories. Uh, at the age of uh, seven, um, I had lost my grandmother and I was very close to my maternal grandmother. Uh, but I um, was so sad about her passing away that I was really hopeless. Uh, I had lost all hope because I could no longer see my grandmother. And this is where uh, also some of my ideas come from. When you read the story, that is what I experienced as a small child about death, about passing away, and how we can be hurt. The flowers uh, of bad things, also a title of one of my books. Uh, I wanted to be a poet and I wanted to write about her death and uh, people found it extraordinary and uh, uh, that is uh, where the spleen comes from. I was very sad. I was saddened by her death. Uh, and uh, a strength was born in that sadness, which was actually good. Uh, uh, we have Charles Baudelaire, uh, 
also as a source of influence and uh, how many other people perhaps who were in similar situations and were also influenced by that. So Mohammed uh, is also one of the characters I will answer to your question first, why I am writing. Well, it is simple. Uh, I think that is the only way I can fight against death. Uh, I face death and uh, I uh, am struggling with that. Uh, and uh, I, I think it is also um, being profoundly afraid of death. Uh, and it helps us when we write to escape death, to escape those thoughts and to have a dialogue. Uh, I take another writer as an example, uh, Ernest Hemingway, for example. Uh, I would like to discuss many things with him or with other authors. You see many books uh, uh, on the screen. I would like to have exchange with them, have a dialogue. Uh, I think uh, that uh, writing is a form of refuge for me. That is where I feel safe. That is where I hide away. And Alain, uh, we can uh, also perhaps uh, hear more about him. Uh, he uh, also speaks about all the crises we have on the continent, also about migration, uh, racism, uh, and uh, uh, I think Africans are no longer going to Europe. It was a crisis that people did that. And uh, how can we maybe look back. <clears throat> I think writing also means that we put the finger on the spot and uh, that uh, we are understood. We have to create something. We should not be afraid of being repetitive uh, and maybe write something other people have already written about, but see things in a different way or make them see things they try to ignore or are invisible for them. Racism in Africa, say in the last century, it is important to say that this text uh, is not about Europe. It does not mention Europe. Uh, uh, it is not a fatalism. Uh, no, it is not that, or because people are dying. Europe is not mentioned. Uh, the story is not interested in Europe. It is about Africa. And uh, the text. Uh, is about something that was at my heart. Uh, I did not want to write about migrants. It was something that was in my heart. And uh, uh, it is a story with 340 pages. And which world is created. It is also about failure, uh, a failure of all of us 
in the desert, uh, in uh, uh, the wilderness, and it is also an integration of solidarity or a capitalist system or a perpetuation of uh, a mechanism. It shows poverty, also uh, loss of hope uh, because of politics or ideology. So uh, it is a trinity between hope and despair and uh, all that uh, goes with it. <clears throat> it shows also Africa. Uh, I chose the route of the desert uh, towards the sea because it also enables us uh, to speak about African phenomena uh, and uh, because we are crossing part of our African history or West African history uh, further north towards the Maghreb region. <clears throat> I am not afraid to write about that. I am also not afraid to say things and show them how they are, show their reality, how it is organized <clears throat> and how we are dealing with that. So we have to create fires in order to see. In your story, uh, you have several characters. They are living in poverty, but they also have intellectual capacities. Uh, and uh, they are in their own continent, but still they are forced to leave. I am also not afraid. Okay. Yeah, but the story, and I said this from the beginning, uh, I wrote about it uh, because I wanted to show the story. Everybody is dying. Everybody is dying. Well, I said before, I wrote about things which are in my heart, and I uh, uh, wanted to show that uh, we are also accused that uh, we are just speaking about death and not enough about love. Alain, our literature is not uh, as hard as people think. I think it's a form of conception. Uh, African literature or how African writers are. Alain wrote about the dictatorial regime in Cameroon. And he was imprisoned. And there was also Western uh, influence and that of the United States which enabled his freedom. <clears throat> so uh, he was a writer who wrote in about 20 languages. 
coming from colonial Cameroon and uh, uh, <clears throat> since the first hours of decolonization and when villages were uh, also bombed, uh, the war of Nozo and uh, today even the uh, situation is not uh, accepted, uh, especially their ideas and feelings were ignored or they were imprisoned because of them. So I think all of us uh, want to write about that. Uh, I wanted to speak about it in my books. Uh, uh, Leopold Sangor also wrote about that. And uh, his books were published in France. Uh, and uh, one said, this is not African literature. It is not about Africa, about the paradise, about the ideal situation. It is about war and it is about the world. It is about imperfection and uh, that uh, uh, there are actions for which people can be blamed and uh, that uh, no country, uh, <clears throat> France or also other Western countries, uh, see uh, and also the League of Champions starts to think about humanity, about the truth, about human truth, and to also look at the African continent and to say certain things. And this is why we have characters appearing in our stories. Uh, is it not also the reason why people emigrate, why they uh, try to escape the continent and go to America and work somewhere else? Mm -hmm. So, um, we also have books published in, uh, in the biggest publishing houses in America in 15 languages. Patrice uh, Galang uh, is also uh, seen uh, as um, a recognized writer and the New York Times write about him. And I think, and I like this uh, uh, expression when we say that good writers are lost in their destiny. Uh, and this is why uh, this book from his first chapter onwards uh, also shows uh, mm -hmm. faith and how uh, we are speaking about everything uh, that is in our destiny and we have uh, characters and personalities appearing in our literature. So uh, are there any other characters that we could mention uh, who are perhaps real and not invented? I think Alain was the most real character and uh, also uh, the way we write, uh, we have to also see how we can approach this kind of literature. Uh, 
Uh, we have Alain. Uh, he resembles uh, Alain Philippe uh, and others. And Alain uh, wrote uh, books against uh, dictatorship. Uh, but that was not the only thing he wrote about. Uh, and the titles of uh, Alain's uh, stories uh, uh, is always about the way how people have left their countries. That was their reality, and he showed it. So, how uh, can we maybe speak about uh, Amadou Diop? Do you know him? Yes, I do. He is a brilliant uh, uh, movie maker. Uh, he's Senegalese and maybe one of the best. He won uh, the great prize of the Luxor Festival. And uh, this is something very good. And uh, he participated uh, in more than 20 festivals worldwide. So this is something, it is an achievement. <clears throat> what can we say more about our continent and how we tell stories about it? Uh, this form of writing and especially of Romans is about uh, how we can say certain things, how we can also express it. Uh, and uh, we have to think about Omer and his Odyssey, uh, how he opened uh, his thinking and also writing uh, to uh, look out on the world. And all these stories try to show the world and also humanity. Uh, we love them all and we love their stories. And uh, now we can also try and show our childhood in our stories. Well, all of this is very nice and beautiful um, when we read your stories. Uh, and there is a lot of poetry also in it. And we can hear the heart speaking. We know that there is pressure on the world and that people act under this pressure in their destiny. Uh, and how, when, how can we now show all those people? Uh, uh, we can also take the English word novel. Uh, or Romans, brother. Um, I think that these two words uh, are not entirely expressing the same kind of story, a novel and the Romans um, may not be necessarily the same. So a novel for me uh, was something I felt lost in. Uh, uh, I felt bourgeois. And uh, that people 
took care of me in hotels and in other places. Uh, we also have to uh, see how we can look around us and how we can uh, arrange ourselves with the text and bring out something new. Let's use the word novel, but it is a story, a romance. It is uh, something that can be best described as a story. And uh, we have excellent uh, writers, and uh, we also have very long novels. And uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Ernesto Sabato or others writing very long stories and novels, uh, we have to also see uh, uh, literature as uh, something poetic or uh, also as a reality in uh, the way how writers technically show their stories. And it is another way to tell the story. And Alain um, is poetic. Uh, and his poetry is also a scandal in a, in a way. Uh, there are also other ways to appreciate our lives. Uh, sometimes we do not have the time to appreciate life. And we have to also show how the world is created and uh, show different facets of life, even though uh, it might sometimes go into another direction. We have to transcribe it. I think it is good in reality. Well, this was very interesting what you said about uh, telling stories, uh, writing novels or romans. Uh, we also see. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yes, because I see there are some, <laughs> some interesting questions. There are the, the questions in dans the dans le chat, maybe a little bit. I hope que vous pouvez lire les, les questions. Peut-être quel est. Ouais, je vois two questions. Uh, où, attends, il y a la version ouais. allemande de l'Odyssée des Oubliés est disponible bientôt, comme oui. annoncé lors de notre rencontre littéraire à Dakar au cœur de la littérature. Oui. La version allemande sera disponible en 2023 chez Orlando Verlag. Uh, the German version will be available in 2023. Uh, so it will be published in Germany. Yeah, super. 2023, c'est quand même littéraire parce qu'il y, y a des traductions qui vont paraître et il y a aussi... Euh, uh, translations have to be made, and there will also be a new novel. Uh, are you not afraid to have written about terrorism? No, no, but I was afraid. I like living. I like the pulse of life. My ambition is uh, to show all corners of Dakar in my literature. <laughs> um, one can say several things. On en saura un peu plus. So voilà. in 2023, um, you will all know a little bit more about it. 
and we can maybe also uh, show more about being afraid of terrorism in movies. Uh, also about Mali and how this danger affects us. So I also felt the danger. I was afraid and I thought about it and how I would feel if this happened to me. This is also a crisis. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> we have the Odyssey of the Forgotten, um, that is the book in my hands. I will perhaps try and read a few lines. I love writing. I wrote like a feverish person for a week when I uh, created this book. So, how many lines may I read? R read something. Which page? 320. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, the wood is dark, silence, obscurity. Uh, so, we are diving in inertia. Uh, we are trying to give one another comfort to find hope again. And uh, people uh, tell their stories, but they have no one close to their heart. Uh, and they try to find another soul. And uh, they only have misery, they have hatred, uh, silence. <clears throat> it is uh, impossible to speak. Uh, I am now on page 322, um, when the sun rises on a Sunday, uh, and uh, how we can embark on a new day, and we see the first sunlight on the universe, <clears throat> and uh, we can also see the trees in the forest. And uh, we can also see uh, that uh, we uh, have left the night behind us uh, and uh, that people are leaving. They are going to Europe, but they will be dying. Uh, and they are hoping for fraternity on their arrival uh, and how uh, we can also find a place uh, amongst our ancestors to tell our stories and how we can also see the culture and how we can tell more about our misery. This is beautiful, simply beautiful. Are there any other questions? Uh, we uh, have also heard more about spirituality on those two pages, 320 and 22. Yes, spirituality is something important in my life. And I'm trying to also show it. We... Uh, Repose dans, dans l'acceptation de, de cette forme de cette spiritualité. Have to accept spirituality, uh, belief, and that we can retain it. 
also the origin of mythology and uh, we need to have access to resilience we have to hold on to something and uh, it has to be professional it has to be organized and people need to hold on to something it is linked to our daily life uh, professional life family life we need something that gives us a balance that is what we have to hold on to religion spirituality and how we can write in a certain poetic form and uh, with tranquility and serenity and to bring them out in the story uh, the best writers Albert Camus or Alexandre Cabeze write about the purpose of life. I think that this spirituality gives us an answer to your question. We have to read novels, stories, and as I said in the beginning, I wrote this book in order to escape death. I wanted to escape death. So we have only one minute left and we have come to the end of our virtual evening. Uh, uh, but we have learned a lot this evening. Uh, <laughs> you have to write more. I want to read more. So, uh, in Namibia. Voilà, allons-y. Uh, Peut-être il y a juste une dernière question dans le chat de Séverine qu'on peut peut-être euh, euh, et Donc, puis, euh, après on commence à, avec le tirage. Le... Ça marche. Donc, est-ce que, donc Séverine, je pense que je lis bien, est-ce que tu penses pouvoir donner de l'espoir à la jeunesse africaine à travers cette Can énorme... you give hope to the African youth through your stories? Uh, I doubt this question very much. Uh, perhaps uh, because you're trying to say that I'm old now. I'm not sure if I can give hope. I hope sincerely that everybody will find in herself and in himself the strength of resilience. And while we are reading, we find something that makes us stronger. And uh, in Côte d'Ivoire, literature will also be much more accessible soon. We have to make sure that people can read and have access uh, to literature. Uh, so, uh, Côte d'Ivoire is my second country and uh, Mauritania my third, that is where my mother is from. And we have to also see 
uh, that people know me already. They have read my books in these countries and uh, my literature should be accessible uh, also to Ivorians. Great. Thank you very much uh, to have uh, shared your thoughts with us this evening. And also, thank you very much for the hope you are giving us. Uh, thank you so much to, to have been with us today. And I hope that we all will uh, benefit uh, this, uh, from this knowledge and this uh, inspiration and hope, obviously. Uh, Super. <laughs> Il n'y en a pas beaucoup, je crois qu'il y a le Wolof, le, le français, l'anglais. Voilà, c'est ça que je parle couramment. So, Wolof, English, French are my languages. I also speak an Arabic uh, dialect which is spoken in Mauritania. And uh, I also have oral school Spanish. So, you see, you are speaking many languages. Continue writing. Keep your keep your thumbs crossed for me.